Good evening. You're watching Conversing with Janine. I'm Janine Nodder. Please welcome my co-host, Bill McNally, from the Wyndham Cable. Nice to be here, Janine. Do you know who our distinguished guest is tonight? Yes, I do. Dr. Samuel Blumenfeld. Did you know that he has written about a dozen books on education and he's the founder of Alpha Phonics? Yes, and you know, I had a chance to bring several of his books here. I have one, NEA Trojan Horse in American Education, The Homeschooling, A Parent's Guide to Teaching, uh, Is Public Education Necessary, The Whole Language, OBE, Fraud, and The New Illiterates. Uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Blumenfeld is a foremost authority on uh, education, and he is the he, he has taught in the public schools and the private school. And he began a full-time writing career in 1970. And he has written books on uh, education, phonics, and his articles have appeared in such diverse publications as Esquire, Reason, Inquiry, American Legion Magazine, Education Digest, Vital Speeches, Child and Family, The New American, Boston Magazine, American Education, The Reading Informer. An internationally recognized reading education specialist, Dr. Blumenfeld, is also a fine speaker and has appeared on numerous TV and radio shows. His latest book, The NEA Trojan Horse in American Education, is a full-length expose of the National Education Association. Good evening, Dr. Blumenfeld. I'm very honored to have you on my show. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Janine, and also Bill. And uh, so I'm delighted to have an opportunity to speak to your audience, conversing with you. Yes. <laughs> so tell us, how and why did you get involved in trying to solve America's reading problem? Well, it happened uh, when I was working in New York as a, an editor at Grosset and Lap. And a friend of mine, a lawyer friend of mine, uh, came to my office and he had created an organization his name is Watson Washburn, and he created an organization called the Reading Reform Foundation, and he wanted me to join his national uh, advisory council, you know, distinguished individuals. And uh, I asked him, I said, well, what is the Reading Reform Foundation going to do? And he said, well, we want to get phonics back in the schools. Well, I was sort of shocked. I said, what do you mean get phonics back in the schools? How can you teach <laughs> a child to read without it. And he uh, suggested that I read Rudolf Flesch's book, Why Johnny Can't Read, which was published in 1955, in which he exposed the, the reading problem that was growing uh, larger and larger in American schools because the professors of education had thrown out the alphabetic phonetic method of teaching reading, and they had put in this look, say, whole word method, which, uh, which of course was the Dick and Jane method, uh, teaching children to read English as if it were Chinese. And um, because of that, it was causing dyslexia, it was creating reading problems, because you can't teach a child to read a phonetic uh, system, like ours, the alphabetic system is a phonetic system. You can't teach it as if it were a Chinese system which is an ideographic system. In other words, the Chinese have characters, and each character stands for a word, and you have to memorize each character, you see. Uh, now, what they were telling children to do was to um, uh, read English, learn English, uh, as if each word were like a Chinese character, to memorize the word on the basis of its shape, its configuration, and that sort of thing. And of course, that produced tremendous problems. And that's why, by 1955, we had a rip-roaring reading problem. And Rudolf Flesch's book exposed everything that had happened. And of course, he was attacked by the education establishment that continued, regardless of his revelations, continued to teach children to read in this faulty manner. And of course, it's, it's come down to this very day, they're still doing it, you know, regardless of the fact that it's been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that uh, the phonics method is the best way to teach children to read. That's, uh, well, that's how I got involved. So after I got involved with the, um, with the organization, I then wrote the New Illiterates in the 70s to bring Rudolf Flesch's book up to date. 
because a lot of people assume that by Johnny Can't Read solved the problem. It didn't. The educators were gung-ho on having children learn to read by this faulty method because it was part of their dumbing down agenda. They wanted to dumb down the American people so that the American people could be led easily into a socialist system. And of course, that's what they've been doing all these years, and that's why today uh, you have such low reading skills among Americans, because you have a lot of adults who were taught to read by that method. And now they call it the whole language method. Uh, in other words, they got rid of the Dick and Jane books, and now they just give the kids anything to read, to guess, you know, the words. So it's a very serious problem. And this whole language, this whole word method produces dyslexia. Now, what is dyslexia? Dyslexia is the inability to see the phonetic structure of our alphabetic words. In other words, if you've been taught to look at each word as a whole configuration, as a little picture, you see the child will be totally unaware of the phonetic structure of the word. He won't see the syllables. He won't, uh, and, and so he develops what I call a holistic reflex. That is, he automatically looks at all words as whole uh, characters. And because of that, that creates a block against seeing the words in their phonetic structure. And when you have that block, you are dyslexic. So it's dyslexia is caused by the schools, by the methods that are used in the schools. Oh, that's all very interesting. I know you have a question, but uh, I, I think in our school district they do teach some phonics too. Because well, I've, I've talked yeah. to several of the teachers. They, they will, nowadays, what they do is they try to combine the methods, phonics with whole language, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work because it creates confusion in the mind of the child. Uh, shall I look at the word as a picture, or shall I look at the word as composed of letters and sounds, you see? You can't do both at the same time. And if you have acquired a holistic reflex, uh, it's a, you have a really tough time uh, reading words phonetically, it's as simple as that. And a friend of mine in, in uh, North Carolina created a test where he can show how a youngster who can read what we call sight words, you know, these are the words that you learn by memory, they can read the sight words, but then you give them an equivalent group of phonetically regular words, they have problems. They slow down, they make more errors, and that's because they have been um, made dyslexic by the method of teaching. So we know how to solve the problem, but the educators don't want to solve the problem. And that's the problem, that's, that's the problem we have. Well, I know uh, earlier you mentioned uh, the book Why Johnny Can't Read, right. and, and then there's this book here. I understand 20 years later he wrote Why Johnny Still Can't Read. That's now, right. Now, is that what led you to develop the alpha phonics system? Yeah, I developed alpha phonics because when I became aware that children, that if you sent a child to a public school, and even some private schools, you had no guarantee that that child would learn to read in the correct manner. And so I figured I'd better create a book that parents can use to teach their children at home to read phonetically. And so I, I created Alpha Phonics, uh, which is a very simple book, teaches the entire alphabetic system uh, in a very, uh, in a method, in a way that any parent can use it. In other words, you don't have to be a, a um, uh, certified teacher, you don't need special training, all you have to do is be able to read the directions and you can teach anybody to read, any child, you see. And it's being used by thousands and thousands of homeschoolers across America. So that's why I created Alpha Phonics because I wanted to make it easy for parents to teach their children at home so that they could avoid their child becoming dyslexic or reading disabled or learning disabled or whatever you want to call it. Because also what dyslexia 
and learning disabilities cause is attention deficit disorder. Attention deficit hyperactive disorder, and I'll tell you why. When you make it difficult for a child to learn to read, and you create a, a sense of failure in that child because he comes to school having taught himself to speak his own language. So he considers himself to be very intelligent. So then he enters the first grade and he is being taught to read by this very difficult method, this look-say whole word method, and he can't hack it. And so suddenly he begins to feel something is being done to him. He felt intelligent when he came into the school. Now he feels dumb. And he, doesn't, he knows that something is being done to him in the school to make him dumb. And so what happens? The child wants to get out, but he can't. And so what does he do? He acts up. You see, his only, uh, his only recourse is to make trouble in the school, and so then the teacher labels him as having attention deficit disorder, uh, attention deficit hyperactive disorder, and then what's the solution to that? It isn't to teach the child to read phonetically, it's to drug the little poor kid. You see. And that's why in New Hampshire and Massachusetts, you have the highest number of kids on, the highest percentage of kids on Ritalin, Adderall, and other. Uh, really? Yes. Wow. Yes, yes. Psychotropic drugs. I thought it was just their diets were terrible. Oh, no, it, had, it has nothing to do with their diets, you know. Uh, it's the way they're taught to read in school that creates frustration and anger, and the only recourse the kids have because the mother isn't going to take the child out of school. The mother is going to listen to the teacher. And the teacher is going to tell the mother, your child is dyslexic. Your child has a reading disability. He needs special education. And he also needs to be medicated, you see. So every school now has a nurse, a school nurse, who does nothing but give out drugs. In other words, the schools have become drug pushers. And, they are the, and, and the pharmaceutical companies are making billions of dollars by having millions of children take these drugs every single day. And these drugs are not harmless. They have their side effects. Some kids have dropped dead on playing fields. Normal kids drop dead on playing fields. Why? Because what Ritalin and these other drugs do is they constrict the flow of blood to the heart. Yes, they do that. They, and, and because of that, uh, the child could have a heart attack on the playing field. And that happens every now and then. It's not, it's not all that often, but it happens enough so that uh, you know, psychologists and, and medical doctors are writing about it. There's um, natural products that um, children can take to help them to concentrate um, that aren't... Well, what are they? Uh, well, it, I can think of a product called Neurotone. It's all natural and... Is it, it, a, uh, is it a drug? No, it's, it's not food? a chemical. What is it? It is um, a holistic approach. Well, the thing is to make parents aware of that. How many parents are aware of that? And would the schools permit that? You see... There, well, there was a case, take it for home. example, there was a case here in, in uh, New Hampshire a couple of years ago where the parents refused to have their child uh, be put on Ritalin. And the child was kicked out of the school. And the parents sued the state. They sued where was this at? Here in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire? Yes, yes, wow. some years ago, or about 10 years ago. And uh, the parents had to go to court to have their child go to school without having to take medication. And I believe that the court ruled against the parents. Wow. What, what, do you remember the name of the case? I want to look that I up. I forget now. It, it happened so long ago. But you could probably look it up on the internet mm -hmm. under New Hampshire, Ritalin, Ritalin cases. Look, uh, Ritalin cases in New Hampshire. But I remember that case very well. 
Uh, and I, I remember a young lady who had the, uh, a high school student who had the same problem. And I was able to, I called their parents and the parents thought I was nuts because the parents believe what the educators told them. Well, you know, I don't want to talk bad about our teachers because I think we have very good teachers here in Merrimack. And well, you know, I don't like to speak, say, say anything bad about teachers either. Teachers teach the way they've been taught. Mm -hmm. And a first grade teacher may be very successful in getting a child to memorize a whole bunch of words. So we have really smart kids then, if there, because there are kids that have been able to read using, I mean, I do prefer phonics, okay, uh, but there are children who are very good readers, so that means that they're very, well, the very thing, smart. The thing is, if they're only reading uh, a, a limited number of words, for example, one of, one of the causes of dyslexia is not only what the schools are doing, but what preschool readers are doing. I'll explain. This friend of mine in, in uh, North Carolina was, uh, came to the conclusion, as I did, that dyslexia was caused by the methods, teaching methods in the school. But I told him, I said, but parents have come to me, me and have told me that their children were dyslexic before they got to school. So he investigated it and he found out how that happens. The way it happens is this. A parent buys a Dr. Seuss book, like uh, Green Eggs and Ham or The Cat in the Hat. And the child is, sits with the parent, the parent reads to the child, and the child memorizes each word, you see. And so the child is already on the road to dyslexia because the child has not been taught that the words are composed of letters that stand for sounds and syllables and that sort of thing. And, and so they go to school with having memorized a whole battery of words, and so the teacher thinks, oh, they're so bright. They can read, you see, because the teacher is using controlled vocabulary, you see. It's the controlled vocabulary that gives the impression that the kids are doing so well because they're reading the same words that they've memorized. So the first grade teacher doesn't realize that when that by the time that child gets to the third grade, he or she will be labeled dyslexic or uh, reading disabled because they can get by the first two grades by memorizing words within this controlled vocabulary. But once they get beyond that into the third grade where they have to read longer words, multisyllabic words, and all of that, that's where, that's where they hit the wall. Mm -hmm. That's where the Dr. Hit Bloom, the wall. I understand that you're having success with this alpha phonics method amongst the Hispanic population. Oh, what's yes. Their, what's their uh, attitude towards this? Oh, book? they love this book. They As do. a matter of fact, this book is, has been used for many years in a school in Boston, a private school founded by nuns. It's called Wait House. We are all in this together. That's the acronym, Wait. We are all in this together house. And um, the, the kids who come there are dropouts, immigrants, <clears throat> dyslexics, the reading disabled, and they all are taught to read with alpha phonics and they love it. So whenever I go to that school, they always want me to sign their books because <laughs> every, every youngster gets a book, you see. And uh, these are Spanish speaking, you know, Portuguese speaking, and they all learn to read very well with alpha phonics. So Better than the rest of us. <laughs> well, anyway, so uh, that's, that's what dyslexia is all about, and that's why we, ha we continue to have so much of it, because the schools have compromised with the whole language people and the phonics people, and they say, okay, we'll teach a little phonics, we'll teach some phonics with whole language, and all it does is create tremendous confusion in the mind of the child, because you cannot develop both reflexes. You cannot develop a holistic reflex and a phonetic reflex. You can only develop one or the other, you see. And so the children, their minds are, are completely confused about this because they want to learn to read, but their teachers are confusing them.
Well, I think they're teaching what they're told they have to teach. Yes, yes. Now, I don't know what methods are being used in the schools of Merrimack. I'd, I'd like to find out. But I know that in, uh, that in the schools of Boston, one of the reasons why we have such a high dropout rate, among, particularly among minorities, is because uh, they're not being taught to read in the proper way. And so if you're in school and you can't read, what's the use of staying in school? You know, you might as well get out into the world and try to get a job, you see. Dr. Blumenfeld, you mentioned, uh, I think it was another program where I heard you talk, you mentioned that uh, a dyslexic, you can tell a dyslexic person because they won't read for pleasure, is that right? Yeah, yeah. They, All you have to do is ask a person, do you read for pleasure? All my children must be dyslexic. <laughs> but they don't read for pleasure? No. Well, we have one, but we force him to. We set the timer and he has to sit and read it. Yeah, well, you see, your children are, pro are probably um, uh, dyslexic, and you don't even know it because... Listen, what I, they was, are I was taught in the public school, though, and... Well, you were, ta you were probably taught by an older teacher. At a t You see, the thing is this. When they introduced the whole word method into the public schools, a lot of the older teachers said, oh, this is nonsense. So they would close the door. They had the Dick and Jane books, but they still had some of the old phonics books. So they would shut the door and teach the kids phonics. We called that, um, uh, you know, when, when you're selling liquor at a, uh, at a, at a at what was the Boot name legging. of those? Pardon? Bootlegging? Yeah. <laughs> They call that bootleg <laughs> phonics. Bootlegging Boot phonics. My husband learned with bootleg phonics. And I learned bootleg. Well, no, in New York City, we didn't even have the whole word books yet in 1930. Uh, 1930 to 19. We didn't have the whole, those books until after World War II when the schools had more money. Remember, the 30s were a period of depression. So the schools did not have the money to buy all of these new fancy Dick and Jane books. So they continue to teach phonics, and also the older teachers believed in phonics. But once the older teachers died off, and these new teachers came in, these young teachers fresh out of the colleges that were telling them to teach the whole word method and instructing them in that, and to use the books that the professors were writing. You see, the Dick and Jane books were written by the, the, the professor at uh, at uh, the University of Chicago. And you had other imitations. You had, uh, uh, what is it, Bob and Betty and uh, a whole bunch of uh, different... Uh, have you heard of the, sorry to interrupt, did, yeah. have you heard of the Faith and Freedom readers? Faith and Freedom, were they the Catholic readers? Yes, I have Well, they had a Catholic of edition of Dick and Jane. Yes, I was yeah, just going to say that. The now. cathedral oh. edition, I think they were called the cathedral There edition. was cathedral books, and then there was also yeah. Faith and Freedom readers that were yeah, different. Yeah, because the, the Catholic schools were also caught up into this. And then they but threw not them as all much away. As the, as, not as much as the, uh, as the public schools, because the Catholic schools at that time uh, were generally run by old nuns, you see, who knew how to teach reading in the proper phonetic way. So this is a problem that's still with us. And that's why I tell parents to be aware, to go into the school and ask that teacher, not whether you teach phonics or not. I mean, they all say they teach phonics, you see. But ask that teacher, do you teach a sight vocabulary? See, a sight vocabulary is a list of words that the child has well, to memorize. Some words you, you have to, like the, the... No, you don't have to. In alpha phonics, we don't use the until we teach th, which is th. And, and then we teach all the other th words, like Beth and uh, Seth and uh, bath, uh, and all of those words, and this, that, the, you see. We have a, a whole lesson just on TH, you see. But you've been sold the idea that, oh, you have to teach the as a sight word, but you don't have to, you see. Now, there are some words we have difficulties in English. For example, we've got three twos, two, two, and two. Mm -hmm. You've got, I went to the school, 
to the store. And he's being too silly. And I have two cents. But they're spelled, they're simple words spelled in three different ways so that you know exactly when you see the word what it means. Because if I said two, 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 you would not know what, which two I was referring to. But if you saw T-O, T-O-O, and T-W-O, you would know, you see. So, but those are minor problems that any phonetic reader can uh, learns very nicely, you see. Well, we have about a minute and a half. Oh, okay. I see. Have another question? Uh, well, what about the homeschooling? Uh, well, homeschooling is growing throughout the country, uh, even in the world, but particularly in the United States because so many parents have realized that the public schools are hopeless. In other words, for ex take for example sex education. Parents have been complaining about sex education since the 1950s. And what have we got today? We have pornography in the schools. Forget about sex education. It's now porno education. You know. Not here, I hope. <laughs> and it's the same thing with the reading problem. Parents have complained that they don't know how to teach. They will not get back to intensive systematic phonics. No matter how much they complain, no matter how many marches they, uh, on the school, how many, how many teachers they speak to, and so they've decided, hey, I'm going to take my kid out and teach my uh, children at, at home. And the interesting thing is that parents have found that they can teach better than the certified teachers. Well, Dr. Blumenfeld, thank you for being on the show tonight. I'm, now I'll find out how many viewers I have, because all the people that disagree with you will, will write. Okay. <laughs> and thank Bill, you. thanks for co-hosting. You're welcome, Janine. And thank you to the station and you, the viewer, for tuning in.